Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here. This is the Electricians in Action. Let's go ahead and get to it. Today we're going to be talking about driving ground rods at detached garages and outbuildings. So whether you call it a shed, a garage, an outbuilding, whatever it is, this is going to cover whether or not you need to drive a ground rod or establish a grounding electrode system in these locations. Now today and tomorrow, all of the scenarios we're talking about is assuming that these are buildings that are being fed from another building or structure. And this is going to be in the residential setting, whether it's single family or multifamily, this is assuming that this garage or outbuilding is being fed from one of those type structures. Later in the week, we'll cover if the garage or outbuilding is a standalone building with its own electrical service. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So today we're going to talk about when not to drive a ground rod. We're going to talk about when you don't need to drive a ground rod. And more accurately put, it, it's when it's not required to be driven. So it doesn't say you don't have to drive one or that you couldn't because there's other places in the code that may suggest you can, but this is saying that it's not required according to the NEC. So this is when you're not required to drive a ground rod according to the NEC. Tomorrow we're going to cover when you are required to drive a ground rod at a garage or um, you know outbuilding, and these are for all detached structures. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's say we have this first scenario here. So we have this detached garage, we have the main residence over here, and we've got a really cool customer and they're very basic they're like hey all I want is some lights out in my outbuilding and I would like to be able to plug in a few receptacles you're like okay cool let's go ahead and run this circuit out here now the question is is do we need to establish a grounding electrode system let's get to it all right, so we're here, and the code article that we're going to be in is 250.32a, and we're actually going to be dealing with one of the exceptions. So what this exception states, and let's go ahead and play the scenario out, and I'll explain it as we go. So let's say we have the main house on the left. We have the detached garage or outbuilding fill in the blank here on the right. So we start out with our conduit. We come over, and we stub up at this house. Now let's just imagine he, they just want to run lights and plugs and just general things, and we run a hot a neutral and a ground out to this building. According to 250.32a, we are actually not required to establish a grounding electrode system. No ground rods, nothing like that. Now, this is assuming you're going out to a shed or outbuilding, there are no grounding electrodes in the structure. And what this is saying is that you do not now have to establish a grounding electrode system. Now, one thing that we do have to watch out for is you must have an equipment ground that comes out to this structure here. You have to have an equipment ground. So if you're running a single circuit, whether it's direct burial cable or in a conduit or aerial, if you can make it code compliant, you can run a single branch circuit out to an outbuilding or a detached garage without being required to drive ground rods and establish a grounding electrode system. And the code book goes one step further and says, if we want to add a multi-wire branch circuit, which is a defined term, which is going to be a two pole breaker that is controlled by a handle tie that is going to give you both phases. It's going to give you the A and the B phase, which technically will give you 240 volts present out at this building. The code says if you have just a multi-wire branch circuit and uh, you, know, you do not have to drive a grounding electrode system. So you can have all the way up to a 240 volt multi-wire branch circuit that is going to allow you to do lots of things. It would allow you to run lights. It would allow you to run plugs. It would allow you to run specific pieces of equipment at 110 volts and 240 volts, depending on how you wired it. So what this is saying is, is hey, if you run a regular branch circuit or a multi-wire branch circuit, and you can only run one of them, okay, you can't run two single branch circuits and you know use this code but if you run one single branch circuit or one multi-wire branch circuit which is two hots of neutral underground you don't have to establish a grounding electrode system which is really cool the critical point when you do have to establish a grounding electrode system we're going to talk about tomorrow and this is going to be a really important video this one is going to be called part one today's video and tomorrow's video is going to be called part two so just to recap according to 250.32a in the exception, if you run a single or a multi-wire branch circuit, you're not required to establish a grounding electrode system. I am the electrical code coach, guys, and I just want to see you guys win. This is the electricians in action. Let's go ahead and get to it. Mm -hmm.